All right, so I'm going to leave that series dropping power resistor in place, which is this white cylinder in here. But I do want to replace the selenium rectifier. It's this big orange jobber here. You can see it on the schematic right here. So on the schematic they show a minus and a plus, and that plus is actually on what's normally called the cathode. And you can see it pretty clearly right here. It's plus. One side's going to this guy here, which is the choke, and the other wire is going over to one of the filter caps. So it pretty well confirms that that plus symbol is this junction right here. Now I, I want to replace that with this. So this little modern silicon diode is equivalent to that big device there. This is a 1N4007, which is rated for 1,000 volts and 1 amp which uh, is definitely overkill but considering how little these cost and why not so I just keep a whole bunch of these on hand so um, a few ways to go about this one you could leave this in place for appearance sake some people can look kinda cool and I tend to agree or you can simply remove it entirely which is what I'm leaning towards doing in this case because this isn't a particularly valuable set and if I get out of the way I can increase the airflow and also if I unmount this I can reuse this bolt and possibly thread it through one of these power resistors because in addition to just this diode I'll probably want to use a series dropping resistor the selenium rectifiers were less efficient than a modern silicon diode, so there's actually a voltage drop across these plates. It's also one of the reasons why they're so large and their spacing between these plates is these get warm and that's to dissipate the heat, so that acts as a heat sink actually. Now if you just go with a diode, because it's more efficient, you're going to end up with a higher voltage here. You're supposed to have 125 volts. I suspect if I just put a silicon diode in there with no dropping resistor, I might have something in the neighborhood of maybe 140 volts or so. Now without knowing exactly what kind of current this draws or what the voltage drop is across that selenium rectifier, I don't know exactly what series resistance to use. Also you should factor in that this set was designed around probably 117 volts AC at the plug, which is lower than what I've got around here. I typically have around 125 a little bit lower in the summer when all the air conditioning's turned on, but uh, generally at least 120 volts. So I'm going to want to drop uh, some voltage because of that as well. So I'm just going to experiment. Uh, so I got a, a bunch of power resistors here. In particular, I think this is. Well, I'm not quite sure how to read that. I think it's either 110 ohms or 31, oh, 31 ohms. I think it's 110 ohms. And uh, I've got a bunch of others. 200 ohms. Uh, and so on. So I'm going to pick one. Well, maybe just go with something around 100 ohms or 200 ohms. And tack it in temporarily. And see how close I am to 125 and I will go higher or lower as needed to get rid of that 125. It turns out that this is a 110 ohm resistor and I was able to reuse that bolt from the selenium rectifier which I took out right here. So again this is just temporary and here's my diode. I'm going to slap the pitch tube back in and power it up while I monitor the voltage and if it's close enough I will dress this up nicer more neatly and get some insulation on these exposed leads and so on. If it's not quite right I will either increase or decrease this resistance value. I, don't know if, <laughs> I guess I should have explained why I'm taking this out at all. These do age and they become less efficient over time which can starve the set of some voltage but also these can fail and when they do uh, it's a really really horrible smell. Smoke would just start pouring out of these 
And I know that firsthand had happened in another set where I uh, was just trying to power it up off of Variac, and I was just keeping my fingers crossed that the seleniums would hold up. But uh, I believe what happened is the filter caps were just uh, leaky and drawing too much current, and this guy, just, one of these guys, just let loose. And <laughs> it took about two days to get the stench out of my workshop. Okay, let's give this a try. Alright, so far looks alright. This tube's warm up, it's dropping down. Oop, nope. Dropped down way too much. We're looking for 125 and we're down around 80. So, gotta go with a much, much smaller resistor. All right, after a whole lot of experimenting, I've got a setup that I'm happy with and seems to work well. Got about 130 volts, which is just a tad high, but set seems to run just fine. All right, after a whole lot of experimenting, I finally got a configuration that I'm happy with. Set's running at 130 volts, which is just a tad high, but I don't think there's anything to worry about. Got a nice stable picture and good sound. So, here's what I ended up doing. I experimentally determined that using a resistor of somewhere around 9, 10, 11 ohms would get me in the ballpark of 125. So I could have simply gone with about a 5 watt resistor in series with that diode and could have called it done, would have been fine. But instead what I started tinkering around with was this device here, which is a fusible resistor, fusistor. Um, what those do is they serve two purposes. One, they act as a current surge limiter. When you first turn the set on, these big electrolytics act kind of like a dead short. And if there was no resistance in there and just a diode, it could blow out the diode. So. Uh, that's one reason they're there. The other is to act as a fuse in case something goes wrong down the line here That'll blow out Well, the one that it came with was only 3 ohms So instead of having a 3 ohm fusistor plus an 11 ohm or 10 ohm resistor over here How about we just increase this resistance? And that's what I ended up doing. I dug through my junk box and found one that was seven and a half ohms uh, Here's what they look like you can find these on eBay now and then. New old stock. I don't think they make any quite like this anymore. I did dig up some modern ones, which are like this. These are also fusible resistors, but these are only 2 watt. And I tried using these, and they got so hot that the solder started to melt. So, uh, these just can't quite take the heat, literally. <laughs> so, uh, I just went with one of these. So it's not quite as high as a resistance as I would like, probably closer to 9 or 10 ohms. We'll get this down to 125, but uh, like I said, 7.5 ohms, cut the voltage down a bit, set so seems to be playing just fine, so that is what I'm going to go with. I'm going to cut the video off here, and I'm going to tinker around with the set a bit more. I want to test the tubes a bit more, do a little bit more cabinet cleaning, and... Then we'll do one final segment, hopefully, to wrap this project up.